A roof truss is an engineered combination of structural members arranged and fastened in triangular units to form a rigid framework for support of loads over a long span. Ends of the trusses bear directly on the opposing exterior walls. In the beginning, trusses components were connected with glued and nailed plywood gussets, or they were simply just nailed together. A newer fastening method is using light gauge steel plates instead of plywood gussets. The plates were pre-drilled to receive nails. Metal plate connectors with teeth punched from the base metal evolved from pre-drilled plates. Most trusses used today in residential and light commercial construction are called metal plate connected wood trusses. The basic components of a roof truss are the top and bottom cords and the web members. Web members extend between the top and bottom cords and are tied together with metal plate connectors. The top cords serve as the roof rafters and the bottom cords act as ceiling joists. Webs and cords must not be drilled or notched without the approval of the truss designer. Trusses may be placed over most types of walls, including wood framed, precast concrete, and masonry walls. Trusses can be designed to form various roof types, including gable, hip, mansard, and gambrel. They are also available for intersecting roofs. A variety of truss designs are available. Common truss designs include the king post, W type, queen post, K type, room in attic, scissors, piggyback, hip, girder, and vault. Residential roof trusses range from 15 feet to 50 feet long. Roof pitch and span determines the height of a truss, which usually ranges from 5 feet to 15 feet. The minimum sizes of lumber used in truss fabrication are 2x4s, or 38x64mm for the cords, and 2x3s, or 38x64mm for webs. The sizes of cord and web members are increased for greater loads, spans, and stud spacing. Douglas fir and southern pine are two wood species most commonly used in truss fabrication. Sitka spruce, lodgepole pine, ponderosa pine, and western balsam fir are also acceptable species. Metal connector plates tie together the cords and web members and distribute and transfer loads between adjacent members. Metal connector plates are manufactured from galvanized structural steel that has been machine stamped to produce small teeth that protrude from the face of the plate. Tooth length ranges from a quarter inch to one inch. Hinge plates are hinged two-piece metal connectors used as an alternative to piggyback trusses. Hinge plates can be attached to the lower ends of top cords, allowing the cords to fold flat for shipping. Truss design must accommodate the weight of the materials used for the truss framework, sheathing, finish roofing materials, and the finished ceiling materials. In addition, local snow and wind conditions must be considered. The less the slope of a truss, the heavier the snow load it may have to support. Each truss component is in a state of tension or compression. Components in a state of tension are subjected to a pulling force. Components in a state of compression gives the truss its ability to carry heavy loads and cover wide spans. The ends of two top cords are being pushed, so they are in a state of compression. Bottom cord holds lower ends of top cords from pushing out. Therefore, bottom cord is in a pulling state or tension. Because lower ends of top cords cannot pull apart, peak of truss cannot drop down. Long webs are secured to peak of truss and also fastened to bottom cord. This gives bottom cord support at spans between exterior walls. Weight of bottom cord has a pulling effect on long webs, or in other words, they are in a state of tension. Short webs run from intermediate points of top cord to points of bottom cord. Short webs provide support to top cord. This exerts a downward, pushing together force or compression on short webs. The overall design of trust roof transfers the entire load of the roof weight, snow load, and wind load down through the exterior walls to foundation. The balance of tensions and compression gives a truss its ability to carry heavy loads and cover wide spans. Roof trusses are typically ordered from a truss manufacturer and delivered to the job site by truck. 
a contractor generally furnishes a truss manufacturer with the roof framing plans for the building. A tight fit between truss members is required for structural integrity of the truss. To ensure tight fits, the cuts must be accurate. The bottom cord of a truss tends to sag at the center after it has been set in place. To prevent sagging, the bottom cord is arched a small amount when the truss is being constructed to produce the desired upward curvature. Trusses are assembled on large tables at a manufacturing plant using various jigs, fixtures, and hold downs. The following is an example of building a truss for a garage. If the dimensions are provided, all the necessary members can be pre-cut with precise accuracy. Then the first truss can be made to serve as a pattern for the other trusses. Wooden blocks are temporarily placed on the top cord and bottom cord to serve as a guide for the following trusses. The members are temporarily fastened with 1 inch staples, then metal plate connectors are properly positioned and pressed into the truss cords and web members according to the provided plans. Gable roofs require only one type of truss and are the easiest type of roof with a truss structure. For a gable roof, at both ends of the building, trusses will have gable studs spaced 16 inches or 24 inches on center instead of webs. Usually, metal connector plates are set only on one side of the gable truss in order for siding to be nailed. Siding will consolidate the structural integrity of gable trusses. Notch holes in the gable truss rafters accommodate the blocking for the overhang. Fasten the overhang rafters to the blocking. Hip roofs are framed using a combination of trusses and conventional framing or by using a Dutch hip system. When framing intersecting roofs, the most efficient method is to place the valley trusses on top of the sheathing. Before trusses are installed, all walls must be aligned and properly braced. Trusses are commonly placed 24 inches on center, or approximately 60 centimeters distance between each other. Smaller and lighter trusses can be placed by hand on one-story buildings. The trusses are placed upside down between the walls, hanging with the peak downwards. Using a lifting pole with a V-shape at one end, one worker can rotate truss to upright position. If one lifting pole is used, it should be placed at the peak of the truss. For heavy trusses covering wider spans, two workers using lifting poles might be needed to set the truss on top of the double plate with the peak upwards. If two poles are used to upright the truss, the pole should be positioned close to the quarter points of the span. Longer and heavier trusses are hoisted by crane into the upright position. Bracket scaffolds may be attached to the inside of exterior walls so carpenters can fasten the trusses to the double top plate. Metal truss spacers are a fast and accurate method for spacing trusses and eliminate the need to mark top plate before placing trusses. Truss spacers can remain in place under the roof sheathing. Some types of truss spacers are not designed to brace roof trusses. They are a convenient means for accurately laying out trusses. Metal anchors, hangers, and angles are used to attach trusses to the tops of framed walls and to one another. Metal anchors are used to attach the heels of a truss to the top plate of a framed wall. Truss hangers are used to attach trusses to other trusses, such as when attaching hip jack rafters to hip rafters. Proper temporary bracing while placing trusses is essential to prevent collapse of trusses with possible damage to the trusses and worker injury. Metal or wood braces can be used for bracing roof trusses. Trusses are erected starting at one end of a building and moving toward the other end. When the first truss is placed in a one-story building, the truss must be securely braced to the ground. In multi-story buildings, the trusses are braced to the subfloor. Vertical and diagonal braces should be installed every eight feet with one end nailed to the top cord and the other end nailed to the horizontal tie or stake driven into the ground. Lateral bracing are installed for additional stability. One method of installing roof trusses is to first erect and properly brace the gable ends and run a string between them. Other roof trusses can be aligned to the string. Temporary diagonal braces should be installed across the top cords of the trusses at least every 30 feet, starting from one end of the building. Permanent metal braces may be installed between roof trusses as lateral bracing. 
orientated strand board, OSB, or plywood panels are used as roof sheathing. When temporary braces are used, the braces are removed as each panel is fastened in place. All braces should not be removed at one time.